Poi lentils. Now, poi lentils. My favourite lentil by a country mile. Um, it's not a huge, it's not a huge gauge as I'm not a big fan of lentils. Don't, I don't dislike them, but do you know what? I never wake up in the morning and go, oh, you know what I feel like today? <sighs> big bowl of lentils, that's what I feel like. No, never felt that in my life. So, poi lentils are the ones I really like. I'm gonna get on to them. I find them the meatiest of all the lentils, and they're a really good lentil to have. Um, I make salads out of them. I just like cook them off and then use this as a salad base, which is really good, or it's a great for a sides. Today I'm actually making it four separately. I'm not gonna, I might show you, never know. I'm doing it for roast pork loin. So I've got roast pork loin and crackle in the oven. I'm gonna do some green beans and some puy lentils, and that's one of my meals I'm gonna do. We're gonna do that for miso and currant jus, because I'm, I'm a bit fancy. But either way, so I'm just gonna run through puy lentils with you now. I'm just gonna rip this down onto the bench so you can see what's going on. Here's my coffee, hello. So, some very familiar suspects here. So the same sort of thing you're gonna do when you're doing off any cooking. Basically mere poire sort of ingredients going on here. A couple of onions, some celery, some leeks, some carrots, some garlic. I'm gonna to have to go pick some rosemary out of the garden because I've got none. I usually use a bit of thyme for this. Um, so, basically like everything, um, you're gonna go for all, all your veg, finding them into the celery. Uh, so, getting them into small, small dice really. Um, and you can be quite precise with this, please. So that one's quite a big celery, so I'm gonna I'm gonna chop it both ways. Um, reason being, uh, morning mate. Uh, reason being, there's someone there by the way, I wasn't just saying morning to no one again. Um, these vegetables aren't gonna aren't gonna blend down into anything, so they're gonna be in, they're gonna be in the exact same shape when you serve it. So that was me celery, getting that into nice little cubes. So uh, what you're after at the end end game is, here we go, nice size bits. Like once again, if you're someone that doesn't really give a shit um, whether you've got perfectly sized pieces of everything, there's no, there's no reason you couldn't um, uh, just put big chunks of everything in there. But I think it's nice to have that little dice there. Carrot wise, these carrots are a bit old. And you'll see me being a bit dodgy with uh, peeling, so I'm not going to peel them, only because they're getting a bit, a bit funky on the outside anyway. And I want them into, need to square it off. There we go. So once I squared off, perfect cubes of this as well, please. Well, I said perfect cubes again, didn't I? Um, it, it eats well. They're sort of the same size as the lentils. They sort of also cook really well. All we're going to be cooking these lentils for. It's about 20 minutes. So if you've got your veg any larger than what's gonna cook in 20 minutes, then you're gonna be uh, running into all kinds of trouble. So that's the uh, diced carrot, diced celery. Um, I mean, I've shown you all the diced onion before, but let's go again for the billionth time. Okay, so gonna leave that bit on, take off the, uh, the root. Got through the top half. Pay it on. All right. So, for the ability of time, down we go. Cross. That way. There we go. Nice little sort of dice there. Beautiful. Onion. Right, I'm gonna cook that in a minute. And then we've got some leeks as well. I like leeks. None of this is really essential for this, as far as you know, just some onions would, would do the job if, if that's all you had. Um, um, let's just get imparting some flavour. So I cut my leeks in half first. They sort of flatten out a bit. You can usually get about three out of two or three squares out of each side. There we go. And chop that 
that too. So this is essentially a mirepoix. And we'll get to it. Beyond all you need, beyond all these ingredients is. So I'm making a meaty. I'm making a meaty, um, here we go. I'm making a meaty pre-lentils today, so there's my dice. Let's get your diced uh, celery, your diced carrots, your diced onions, your diced leeks. I've got to dice all this in a minute. But let me, um, let me get up there. Bit of higher still, all right, there we are. All right, so I'm making a meaty one today. I'm making meaty pre-lentils. These are my pre-lentils, by the way, just in case you've never seen pre-lentils. They're green. It's speckled. In fact, I ordered a tub of free lentils from my uh, dry stores company and they sent me dark speckled lentils. Can't make up your own bloody names for lentils, people. They're free they're, they're lentils, aren't they? Yeah, dark speckled lentils. That might explain exactly what they look like. Can't go around calling this, oh, give us one of your, you know, slightly green stalky things, please. You know, no, it's celery. Um, anyway, I'm making meaty ones, so I'm going to put like a, I'm going to make like a beyond gray, beyond the gray, uh, beyond the stock. Sorry, I'm going to make a bit of a jus, um, or some, uh, some uh, with some beef stock and make it into a bit of a thick sort of jus. And I'm going to use the jus, put a bit of jus in my um, in my braise. My what well, I'm going to call it a braise because you kind of braise down the um, the pre lentils. That's how you cook them. So I'm going to braise them. Um, and I'm going to put a bit of sauce in there, basically. So if you're making a nice gravy for anything you're doing, and you make all like jus, not gravy, I don't give a shit about your packet gravy, sod that off. If you're making some nice sauce with pan juice or whatever, keep a bit. Um, end of your dinner, if you can't think, freeze it, because that would be great going into this. Or if you're making some stews, whack it in there. So we're just going to whack that in there. You could use veggie stock, use a nage, uh, use whatever you want. Uh, I've never made it with fish stock and stuff, so you know what? Sounds repugnant to me, but you know, you might like it. Um, anyway, so I'm going to dice all this up, I'll get back to you. Okay, so, over the stove, get some fire going. Oh. Okay, pan on. Oil and pan, I'm going to go no, I'm going some olive oil in here, not the good stuff. I'm actually going to go a bit of rancid oil too because I'm running out of oils. Uh, there we go. In the pan she goes. It seems like a bit of oil but I'm cooking a lot of stuff off so you don't need that much oil. I've got my bowl of uh, diced goodies from carrots to um, anything like that. So if I get a bit of warmth in there. I'm going to sear that off. It's about as simple as it is. I've sliced up the garlic because um, I like the little bits of garlic because I've gone through this before. So. Poi lentils. Now, as I said, this one's a meaty one, and I'm using this as a side for my stuff, but it makes a brilliant salad, like it really does. So, I mean, like, instead of using what I'm doing today, you could whack, you could cook for, I, I do my one for a superfood salad, and I put ginger and chili through it, and use a veggie stock, and then when that's cooked, that's sort of my basis for the salad. And then I build everything else around that. I put spinach in, avocado, I put soaked cranberries in there, all kinds of stuff. This one's meaty, hot, uh, and warm. Oh, hello, name of my sex tape. Um, I don't know where, why, why I'm bothered with all that stuff. I'm just, I'm just a disgrace. Um, anyway, back to the pan. We cook this all off. Here we go, put a warmth in there now. Here the sizzle, here the sizzle, so good. All right, here we go. Once again, I'm gonna do this in a bit more speedy motion, but it's essentially gonna be this, cook down, the garlic's gonna go in, my pre are gonna go in. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm gonna sip my coffee just to sort myself out. So as that's going, uh, and then I'm gonna go, it's a bit over double the amount of liquid to pre lentils. So I'm gonna put in a certain amount of pre lentils. Say, say I put 500 grams in, probably gonna put 1.2 liters of liquid and let that cook for 20 minutes simmering. They do absorb most of it and then once they're left, they absorb a bit more of residual heat. Residual heat, remember that, it's your friend. But also, be your enemy. Like everyone. All right, cool. Anyway, enough conspiracy theories about pre lentils. You can see, it's cooking down lovely. 
just absolutely beautiful. Get her out in a whole bunch of tweeds. Here you go, tweed lentils. Uh, remember, these are going to expand, so don't put it in a pot that's going to be too small, whatever. I'm going to give them a good coat. These don't really need to be opened up like a risotto rice or something like that in the heat. I just like to get it in there so I know it's got a good mix. Um, yep, yeah, lovely. Right, I'm going to go all of them. All right, so in there. So now I need just over double that of liquid and 20 minutes of simmering. Remember, the liquid I've got, you can see I've got like a basically a beef stock here. Um, and then I'm going to add, I've got a little bit of jus that I've got left from something, and I'm going to probably add that in there too. I'll put some rosemary in there and then garlic. There we go. So just over, you, you guys measure it. So, you know, 500 grams to 1.2 litres of liquid, maybe a bit more liquid. It's the other thing, you're just going to keep your eye on it, just keep an eye on it. 20 minutes of simmering, and you still want it to be a little bit of moisture because it will keep soaking up depending when you're serving it too. So, anyway. Here we go. Already oh, tasted pretty bloody good. All right, cool. So I'll go time that way. Okay, so it's been 20 minutes. Um, you can see they've pretty much soaked up most of the liquid. Just want to try your pre lentils, and as long as they like your teeth go through them and they're you know al dente for want of a better word, um, they'll be fine. I always like to stop them a little bit before, um, just so the residual heat keeps going. So that's pretty good, but I'll probably still have a few other components to go. I'm gonna freshen this up a bit with some lemon and some um, parsley, uh, but essentially, this would be ready to go. So, this is kind of a bowl of this now. Have a bowl of this now and it'd be delicious. Or as I said, I'm gonna put this with pre-lentil. So I'll show you what I'm gonna, I'll put it with pork and crackle. I'll show you what I'm gonna do with it. All right, cool. We're gonna crack on with that. Actually, before we do that, I'll show you my pork. So I am putting this on top of pork. So here's my pork for today. Oh, just look at that. Crackle, beautiful crackle. All right, so quick tips on pork. So whenever you wanna cook pork, it looks that delicious. Oh, just look at that crackle. Oh. When a pork cook pork that delicious, what you want to do is get it cooked. Well, I brine my pork, so I brine lots of meats to get some flavour in there anyway. Regardless of all that, we'll do a pot of pork. Secret for me is lemon juice and salt. Can't say it enough. Um, some people use vinegar, so it's the acidity in the lemon juice and the salt that makes the crackle pop. So you want a nice dry skin to start with, then rub it with salt and lemon, and it should pop up and blister like that. Anyway. Over here, so what we're doing is, um, I see that my music's still playing in the kitchen, which is probably annoying you guys. Anyway, too late for that now. Uh, what I'm gonna go through here is, I'm gonna freshen this up. Uh, I'm gonna freshen uh, my pre lentils up with uh, lemon zest. So you know the whole routine of there, I'm gonna zest all that, brilliant. I use loads of lemon zest, like my fridge is always full of lemons with uh, um, the zest taken off, naked lemons as it was. Um, Still use them for dressings and all that sort of bizzo, so that's fine. So I'm gonna zest all them. I'm gonna chop up some parsley. And I'm not gonna be, oh, I'm not gonna use the stems of the parsley. But I'm certainly not gonna go through and pick it like some sort of crazed anal chef that needs every single stem off. Um, Cause I just want this for a bit of freshness. So a bit of lemon, a bit of parsley. I'm gonna chop this all up through. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a lot more than you need. But yeah, at home you just need, you know, half a lemon's worth of zest. It really just lifts it and freshens it up. Um, there we go, so I'm going to chop some parsley, do some lemon, get okay, back so to look, it. This is it, they've soaked up all the goodness, you can see they've just filled up the pot more and more and more, until they're really lovely. Now, got my very roughly chopped, it's kind of gremolata I suppose, it's got parsley and it's got uh, lemon. Um, and you know what, a bit of capers wouldn't be awful in this, if you did want to have the full gremolata and put that in there, that'd be great. I'm just doing that, and this would be lovely at the last minute too. I'm putting it there for a bit of freshness, but if you're making your dish, you can sprinkle a bit on top. So and essentially what we've got here now is amazing pre lentils. I wish you could eat a bowl of this like it is. Fry up some chorizo, put it in there. I'm putting some pork on top. Add just some other veggies, doesn't matter. That is delicious once the steam clears. That's the good stuff. 
I'll, I'll show you a plated version with my pork and green beans too, but delicious. A quick plate up for you just to see what's going on. So we've got these lovely lentils. Nice and thick and a big pile of them. Oh, lovely. Couple of green beans. Yes, so there we go. Yourself a nice bit of a pork with crackle. Hello, uh, pork with crackle. And I've made like a miso currant jus. So basically make a jus or a gravy. I've added some miso and some currants into it. Oh. And that is what your dish will look like. I'll take a photo, it's probably better than that. Beep.